right, so I'm going to show you guys how to ink your block and a few details on safety or cleanliness, things like that. So first off, we're using um, fabric screen printing ink, but it's the same thing that we're going to use for block printing, but we will use this later in the semester when we do screen printing. Um, you want to make sure it's nice and tight and then kind of shake it up before you use it. It has kind of a strange globby texture. And then they're really sometimes hard to get open because the ink will get in the ring of the cap and then it'll act like glue keeping it closed. So if you can't, when it's actually time to print on your fabric, if you can't get the lid open, let me know. I have a little trick to do with the screwdriver. So anyway, you're gonna open it. Um, you can see the consistency is kind of a semi-solid liquid congealed goo. Um, but you're going to get a spoon and you're going to scoop out just, you know, one little spoonful and put it on your inking plate. You may need more, you may need less, but just start with a little scoopful. I normally lay the spoon in the cap and set it off to the side. You try to avoid getting ink on your work surface, um, not just for cleanliness sake, but when you start actually printing on your fabric, if you start getting dollops of ink all over your surface, they're going to get on your fabric in places you didn't want them. And this ink stains. That's the whole point is that it stays permanently on fabric. So I've got um, aprons for you guys to wear um, from previous years. So you don't have to worry about that. I kept my sweater on, but if I were y'all, I would at least get your sleeves all the, all the way out of the way because you don't want to drag it in there. So the first step is to get ink all over your brayer. So this is a brayer. It looks kind of like... Um, a paint roller um, but it takes a little bit of time to start because you've got to get the ink all over the roller um, so notice I'm picking up and doing short rolling motions eventually you'll be able to roll it back and forth and it will actually roll but at the beginning you're just kind of like do you see how it's not rolling it's just pushing so you've got to do those short picking up motions to make sure it's covering the entire roll. So notice like there's a ton of ink still there. That's okay, it just goes to show like you really don't need a lot to get started. Um, and you don't want too thick of a amount on your brayer too. So you wanna really go back and forth to make sure it's thin and even. You're then gonna have your block nearby as well as for you guys some paper that you're gonna practice on today. But when we actually do this on your fabric, you'll have a much bigger workspace and we'll be in the studio and you'll be able to like spread your whole fabric out. Um, but what you're going to do is evenly roll the ink onto your block. I'm not pressing down hard. I'm just gently lifting and rolling. I'm looking at those edges, making sure each piece that's raised is getting ink. And sometimes it's hard to avoid getting ink on your surface. Just kind of be aware of where it is and potentially cover it up with uh, another sheet of paper. So I lay my brayer down on my inking plate. Notice I put the handle to the side. One, so it doesn't roll anywhere. And two, I want to avoid the handle getting in the ink. Next, you're going to lift your tile. I'm trying to grab in areas where there are no ink, but you're probably going to get a little messy. It just kind of happens. You're going to lay it down gently, trying not to twist it. I twisted it a little bit. And then firmly, but gently, like you're not like smushing at it. You don't want it to slide on the paper. So you're pressing down from above, making sure to get every edge and kind of work your fingers across to get any parts that are supposed to get on the paper, but are maybe a little shallower than the rest of the design. When you pick it up, you want to hold your paper down and lift from one corner and lift up and away. All right. So that's a really good print. Um, what you'd want to do next when y'all are practicing, you're going to want to, you don't have to re-ink your brayer. It's got plenty on it right now. Have it laid down, roll it again. Yeah, I forget what their design was. This was a student several years ago. Um, you want to make sure, and maybe you write it on the back of your block before you even get started. Like maybe you write your name on the back really clearly because you want to keep the same orientation every time you stamp. 
Because if you've worked hard to create your repeat pattern, it won't work if you do this upside down. So, uh, yeah, that looks right. Um, we'll see. I don't actually think this one repeats now that I'm looking at it up close. But we'll find out. And that was crooked. LOL. Mm -hmm. And it's smushed when I set it down. So you want to go slow. I think this one repeats up and down pretty good, but her side to side might not. Or maybe I flipped it. Who knows? But you're going to, yes, yes, mushed it. I slid it over. Um, you're going to just practice. You can use multiple pages. Um, the way that one actually works, like if I hadn't slid it, it actually looks like it would have connected pretty good. And then the pattern would have carried down the fabric had you repeat it up and down side to side. So it actually turned out pretty neat. Um, you'll be able to save these papers if you want to include it on your board because you do have to include a sample of fabric with your design, but you might not want to cut away a piece of your fabric that I'm giving you. So you may want to hold on to these and use these for your board so you don't have to waste fabric. Um, let's say you were looking at this and a ton of ink was showing up in these middle areas, stuff that you didn't want to be there. You're going to take this to the big main sink in the studio, set it down at the bottom of the sink, turn it on, and with your hand, gently rub all the ink off. Be very gentle, because as we've already learned for some of you, these are very soft, very delicate, and they can break. So if you're in there like scrubbing crazy hard, little pieces of your design that you want, they might fall off. So be gentle, dab it with water really good, and then bring it back to your desk, look at your design that you printed, look at your title, and carve away what you don't want from what you've seen show up that wasn't supposed to. Does that make sense? And then you could always then go back to the inking station, ink it again, test it again, and see how it's improved and if you need to do that process over again. Um, I am not going to take off significant points if your pattern doesn't repeat perfectly, but it should look cohesive. Like I shouldn't be able to tell there are straight lines on the edges of where your block was, unless that was like part of your design and they overlap and they become invisible. But like some students were noticing they hadn't like curved their curves correctly on the very edge because in their mind it was the edge, so it didn't matter. And then when they printed, they were seeing a lot of straight, sharp angles. So they just came back to their tile and carved those to be smoother. And so it made it look much better. Um, I'm going to leave this station open for you guys to use throughout the class period. But if we were doing this for real and like each of you individually had kind of an area you and a partner were working, this jar is like $65. It's expensive product. So that means we've got to be as um, like efficient with its use as possible. So when you're done, like if I were cleaning this up, I would use this uh, gift card or Cato gift card, whatever. And I would scrape all the ink off the brayer and swipe it into the jar. And same with the inking plate. I'd scrape all this up and put it back in there. And then, of course, you've got to wash your brayer, wash your inking plate, and ideally wash the spoon. Um, I even sometimes just use my finger to get the rest of the ink out of the spoon and wash my fingers really good. Um, but I don't have a gajillion spoon, so if we can reuse the spoons, that would be great. Um, no one's eating out of them. So, um, okay, so that's your brief demo. You can.